<laughs> and Rudolf Birkhoff, who actually is a real, genuinely eminent person, the founder, regarded as the founder of paleopathology, the study of the pathology in, in uh, bones, said, and here is my translation, and I can show you the original German if you like, and I might have gone terribly wrong, but I think he said, the individual in question had in his childhood suffered from a mild degree of rickets and then returns to health and activity, interrupted by considerable damage to the skull, from which he fortunately recovered, but which resulted in later arthritis deformities, along with the changes due to old age. So that, according to Birkhoff, was um, what was wrong with the Neanderthal skull. And then, of course, they discovered more Neanderthal skulls and more and more and more. And all these people look pretty silly. And then Pithecanthropus, the first specimen of Homo erectus from Java, was discovered in 1891. And one Daniel Cunningham said the fossil cranium described by Dubois is unquestionably to be regarded as human. And whereas Virchow had to have his say again, and he said it's a giant gibbon. According to all the rules of classification, this creature is an animal. Wit and pain. Um, so they will try to avoid <coughs> saying that fossil humans are actually different from anything else, even if one says it's human and the other says it's ape. Reminds me a bit of one creationist. And then Australopithecus africanus, when that was discovered by Raymond Dart in 1924. Sir Arthur Keith, a noted paleoanthropologist, said, on the evidence now produced, one is inclined to place Australopithecus in the same group or subfamily as the chimpanzee and gorilla. And Sir Arthur Smith Woodward, director of the British Museum of Natural History and an expert on fish, said, I see nothing definitely nearer to the human condition than the corresponding parts of the skull of the modern chimpanzee. And Ian Schwartz, an expert on the living primates, said Australopithecus appears to be a living dwarf gorilla. And of course, Dart had an extra thing to um, be aware of because by then, of course, the creationists had gradually begun to get going. The religious fringe had become aware of paleoanthropology and the danger it held for their views. And they said, Dart is sitting on the brink of the eternal abyss of flame, and Dart will roast in the general fires of hell. And Dart's punishment will be being unblessed with a family which looks like this hideous monster with a hideous name. And um, Dart did eventually die. He died at the um, really um, un unusually early age of, I think, 95. And um, uh, after his long life, he had a chance, presumably, to discover whether the news came true. OK, back to reality and back to Florence. And back to Homo floresiensis, a completely different species from any previously discovered. That's where Flores is, it's separated, or at least its offshore islands of Komodo and Rincha are separated by a deep water channel from the islands of the west of And its fauna is very special, it shows signs of having been there for some millions of years. And uh, as Arrow shows you where Java and Bali are. So did the Hobbit's ancestors have boats to get across? Maybe, maybe not, I don't know. It's not far. Nonetheless, not much else did get across, it's true. If they came a long time ago, Flores may have been joined to Sumbawa, and I sort of thought about this back and forth. Uh, was it joined um, in time for Homo floresiensis to get across? Um, I think maybe not, after all. Um, the, uh, the rodents of Flores are extremely special, and um, they seem to have been there for perhaps longer than I don't know. It's, it's an open question, but I'm trying to think not now. And then, did they coexist with Homo sapiens? Because they were there quite late. And people were there in that big continent down on the right about at least 50,000 years ago, at a time when um, Homo floresiensis, which is there, and perhaps on the way to Australia, was being inhabited by, by hobbits. What gives? Well, in fact, there were two possible routes to Australia that Homo sapiens could have taken, and um, a northern and a southern route. And I must 
point out that the earliest Southeast Asian fossil is there 40,000 years ago, near Cave in Sarawak. And the hobbits are there, so they're on the southern route, mm -hmm. if you like. And on Java, Homo erectus may have persisted if the dates are right and really do apply to yes. human skulls about 13,000 years ago. So not just hobbits, but maybe Homo erectus was there at the same time as Homo sapiens was elsewhere. What price Homo sapiens having taken the northern route and not getting to the southern islands until much later? After all, there was rainforest in between, and humans are not very good at living in rainforest. Okay. Conclusion. And then, hobbits are not there now. Well, no, there are religions of little people in various parts of Indonesia, and on glorious little people are called Hidden Goka. Well, interesting legends. Okay, postscript the acts of Professor Tukum Yakov, whom we've met before. Indonesia's paleoanthropologist, proponent of the Hobbit as a microcephalic pygmy hypothesis. His lab is in Yogyakarta, which is in central Java, well to the east of Jakarta where the Hobbit specimens were housed in the Center for Archaeology. And he insisted on borrowing them for study in his own lab. He didn't come to Jakarta and say, may I study the specimens here? No, he stood over them and said, I want to take the specimens back. And when they were finally returned to Jakarta, they were not in the condition in which they had been sent. There's LB6, the second jaw, which hadn't been described yet. At it, and you can see the way it's got broken for Yakov and after Yakov. And LB1, even the jaw of the Hobbit itself, apparently, Debbie argued, tells me no longer fits the cranium. You can see the way it's been damaged. That's how it now is on the right, and that's how it looked before, taken from a uh, CT scan on uh, the left. <coughs> they look distinctly different. Damage had occurred. But you ain't seen nothing yet, and that's the nominal age <coughs> before Yakov. That's all. <laughs> oh. Thank you, all these people. Thank you, um, Woods, Debbie Argue, and Mike Warwood. Um, stand up and just say hello. <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs>